so now we thought we'd cover you a quick tutorial on how plain text is going to work to replace for solar text. We are still working on uh, some options to replace solar text, but as of right now, we know for sure that plain text is going to be able to be produced and we will be able to supply that with no problems. So basically all we have here is I went ahead and I made a little small box so that we can do a good demo. You have your plain X covering. You also have your polytech. So the process, just to explain it, it's going to be, you would lay your, you would brush this down here with the polytech. Okay, that gives it your adhesive base. You're going to want to let that dry. Once that dries, you can put your covering on the top and use a heat gun to activate it. Just like you would other covering. Basically, the only real difference between the plain text material and the solar text material that you guys are used to using is that there's no adhesive back on the back of this. We're applying the adhesive with the polytech. So basically, what you would do is you would go ahead and brush your polytech all the way around all the sides that you have. Sides, both sides, because you're going to be wrapping the stuff around. Make sure you get a good even coating all the way around. Just brush it on there. You don't have to go overboard, but you do want to make sure that you have good covering because everywhere that there's adhesive is where you're going to need the material to stick. Once you have that covered, you're going to set it up so that it can dry and flash off. Once it dries, and it won't take it very long to dry, then literally all you do is you cut your material to however you want to put it on there and apply heat to it, and that activates the glue in the material. At that point, it goes on just like regular covering. So now I have this material, it's all ready to go. I've already got the polytech all spread out on it, nice and good. I'm gonna add my material. Then at this point, all you need to do is tack it down and it's going to work just like the regular solar text that you guys are used to. You're just going to tack it down a little bit and start working it around the material just like you did before with solar text. At this point, you basically got solar text. I mean, it's it's going to work exactly the same way. So you're going to start laying the um, heat to it so that it activates the glue. And again, at this point, it's going to work just like the solar text did. You're just going to iron it on there. And just so I can show you, you can see the stuff's already adhered. It's all good to go. I need to apply a little bit more heat in these corners here, but that's easy to do. Everything's down just like it would be if you were covering your aircraft. Let a little bit more heat in these corners here. And at this point, like I say, it's going to work just like your solar tech. You're going to just cover just like you would. There's really no difference at all in the material. Again, all this is is the material without the glue on it. And we're applying the glue to the surface. One of the cool benefits of this system is, is you're actually going to wind up a little lighter in the end because you don't have glue where you don't need it. Especially for you that like to paint your aircraft rather than use a colored uh, film. It's going to wind up being a little bit lighter because you don't have any material on this space. And you can see this is already pretty set up. And that's really all there is to it. Then you would just cut your corners, fold everything in, and uh, cover it up just like you would regularly. So we wanted to completely finish this off for the YouTube video. Uh, we did have a couple of questions on the Facebook video. So we thought when we finish this off and posted it on the YouTube, we'd expand a little bit. So you can see here, we have the finished panel. Everything that we did on the last video is all still good to go, all ready to go. So what you're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna do basically exactly the same process. You've already got this on there and sealed. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your polytech and do the exact same process that you did on the other side. You're gonna brush it down real good. We're gonna make sure you get the edges all the way around so that you have something to stick to. So I'll go ahead and brush the polytech on and we'll let it dry and then we'll come back and finish the panel off. 
Okay, so now that all our glue's dry, I know it's gonna be hard to see on the video, but we've got a liberal, liberal amount of glue all the way around. Then on this side, it's exactly the same thing as we did on the other side. You get your covering material ready to go. You set your iron, you set your iron on this for 212 to 248 degrees Fahrenheit for gluing it down, okay? That's gonna be the optimum temperature for this covering. Then all you do is literally exactly the same thing you did on the other side. You just apply the heat. Just with that little bit, you can already see that it is attached. It's already on there and ready to go. Now what we have to do is just finish off the corners. Trim it and she's good to go. So what I feel gets a better coverage on the corners when you're working on uh, a piece like this is to do a 90 degree cut to the corner. I think you get a much better coverage of your corners this way. Just come out right from the edge, cut a 90 degree, didn't quite get through that, let me try that again. So that way, when you fold your corners over, you fold you would fold this one over, iron it down, and then you would do the same thing on this side. You would fold it over and iron it down, and you're going to get great coverage on that seam. So to show to show that on the video, I've already got a 90 degree corner cut here. So I tack this corner down, just like that. Fold this side of the 90 in, tack it down. And then when I fold this side over, You can see that that corner is perfect. Just apply the heat to it. Now this is an area where if you didn't get quite enough glue, you might wanna put a little dab of glue along the top of that edge so that you have enough material to pull through to the outside because you've actually got a layer of covering underneath. So if you didn't get enough glue on it in the first step, you can always go back through and apply a little bit of glue on that seam right there, and it would work just fine. We're gonna see if I had enough on there or not. See, I didn't have quite enough glue on there, so what I would do at this point, where I tack this down, I would go ahead and add just a little bit of glue to that, so that way when I pull it down and over, I know what's gonna hold. So I'll just go ahead and do that right now and we'll let that dry. So now that I've applied a little bit more glue to the top of this, I can fold this down. And tack it right in that corner. And that'll seal up just fine. See how that attached? Now it's all good. That corner is finished. So then all you would want to do is go through and do the rest of the corners in the same way. And once I get that done, I'll show you how to tighten it up. Okay, so now you can see I've got all my corners down. Everything's on there and ready to go. Next step is going to be to trim off the excess. Real simple process. Clean it up, 
and you'll be ready to go. I'll get to that point and then I'll come back and finish off. So you can see here, I got everything trimmed up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and give it one more final tack just to make sure all the edges are down good. Again, for setting this down, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your iron is set to 212 to 248 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's gonna be the ter perfect temperature for this setup. Okay, so now, this is the section of it that I did in the first video. You can see how tight this is. The section that we just completed, you can see how it's pretty loose. So all you have to do at this point, and I didn't even turn my iron up. Uh, the specifications of the material say it's 212 degrees to 248 degrees Fahrenheit for gluing down. And for shrinking, it says it's 266 degrees to 302 degrees Fahrenheit. But I'm going to leave my iron set on the medium setting, which for me is between the 212 and 220 um, degree setting. And I'll show you how this works. Even with the lower setting, see how fast that tightened up? And that is all there is to it. Okay, so now you can see I've got the box all covered. And I just want to show you, all this is, is the poly tack on the wood. And then I ironed it all down and then use the iron to shrink it up. And you can see here, it's plenty tight enough for any application you're gonna need, okay? Everything's all good. So now the next step in this process is you're gonna need to use some poly brush. Now what you do with the poly brush is the same thing you do with the poly tack. You would get into the poly brush and you're gonna wanna do this in a well-ventilated area. Probably gonna wanna try to do this outside. This is really strong stuff and you don't want this in your house. So if you've got a place where you can do it outside, or if you've got like a paint booth that's really well ventilated, I would suggest that you wear even a mask with it. It's some pretty strong stuff, okay? So you just, just be aware of that when you get it. And all you're gonna do with that is you're gonna take it and brush it on to the weave. So you just cover this whole thing with the poly brush. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna seal the weave so then that you can do whatever finish you want on it. You can paint it, you can use some automotive primer on the outside, you can then paint it with latex paint, you can finish it however you want in whatever color you want. So when you get that part of it done, this is what you're gonna look like, okay? So this, is, this was one that we did earlier. This has all been brushed and dried on there. Now this, this surface here we have is completely finishable. So we can use some primer on it, we can use uh, uh, some uh, latex paint. So for something like this, depending on what type of a finish you want, you could lay down some automotive primer on this, sand it, get it all nice and smooth, uh, lay another layer of primer down, sand it all nice and smooth. However you want to do it, you can keep adding. The thing to keep in mind is, is every layer you add, you're going to be adding weight. So you don't want to go crazy with this stuff. But if you used automotive sand, or automotive primer and sand it off, then that's where you can get your smooth finish because this finish here on the outside of this isn't going to be real smooth. Now, if you're not worried about it, it's a, it's a plane you're not worried about. You don't have to use the primer, but I would suggest using the primer, sanding it down, getting a nice smooth finish, and then painting it with the latex paint. And that's all there is to it. So I, want, I, so I wanted to show you the kind of finish that is achievable with this. This is Plantex setup that we already had here and it's the same thing see how this was nice it was nice and smooth and finished and painted and that's what you end up with just like that so those are the kind of results that are achievable with plaintex takes a little bit of work takes a little bit of practice but this is the kind of stuff that you can turn out on your own that's pretty much it if you have any questions, feel free to let us know, and thanks for watching.